so welcome everybody. It's good to see the um, faces that I know and lots of new ones. I just came, uh, yeah, last year came through kind of a really rough time and I found block therapy. I was, um, let's see, I will, I, will, I will be the devil here, my mirror. Yeah, I was uh, exploring German New Medicine, if anybody's heard of that. It's another really sort of edgy modality. And uh, there was an interview with Deanna Hansen on block therapy. And I just, I don't know, I just knew something about it. And so I started listening to her things. And, and I started doing this practice at home with a rolled up towel. And even the rolled up towel was like really profound in what it was doing. It was like going into my organs, you know, having me meet my breath on a whole new level. I was learning how to breathe in a whole different way. And, um, yeah, I had gone through a time I'd lost, uh, see, I had to get Terry, just think about it. But anyways, I'd lost both my dads and my relationship. And, you know, it was just like everything happened all at once. And I just hung on to this block for dear life. I just was like, it was a whole winter. I just like got underneath the covers and just bawled my head out. And I, I used it for grieving. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the side effects of grieving with the block was that I was really, everything felt so good. I mean, I would get on it and I would fall asleep for hours, you know, <laughs> instead of like being in my mind and fretting and just rehashing stories all day long. Um, and. I would fall asleep and I would just sleep for hours and hours and this went on for, for months. I slept as much as I needed. It was wonderful. And I g could get to the point where I wasn't crying as much, you know, I mean, it was really purging, purging, just getting deeper and deeper into my tissues. And it's really beautiful because you're just kind of following your own pain. You're not creating pain. You know, we're so taught to be afraid of pain. So, um, yeah, so that's how I got here, and then I was just like, I gotta share this. This is too amazing. Um, I did lose inches right away. I'll just say that my experience was uh, I had a pair of pants from my <clears throat> 20s that I was my favorite pair of pants that I hadn't been able to wear for probably 20 years. <laughs> Anyways, they'd been sitting in the pile to get rid of forever, and I thought, oh, let me try them on one more time. And they fit. I zipped them up, and they, like, they had room. And I hadn't really lost weight, but I'd lost shape. My shape had changed. Um, so, yeah, that was really good. It really, like, helps purge the limp, and I did lose a lot of, like, kind of that fleshy stuff that we get after menopause. And I kind of had like, you know, several chins starting to kind of happen because this is all a function of like falling forward. This is all flesh falling forward and everything getting kind of stuck and built up. So, you know, that changed. Um, having more flexibility in my shoulders. I've got really big issues with my shoulders and have since I was 19. Um, I have all this range and everything, but you start to move things around and like all of a sudden my thumb is really hurting or this finger's really hurting. Why are my fingers all of a sudden hurting? Well, let me just block them and it, it just leaves, right? But that's the fascia finding its way and unwinding. It's very mysterious. So anyways, hopefully I haven't just given the whole presentation, but <laughs> let's see. Um, so yeah, so we'll go through essential fascia facts, how time, trauma, and injury and habit affect and how we grow and age the way we do, um, little anatomy and physiology, and you know, really the goal, I mean, we'll all have our own goals. Most people want to get out of pain. They want to get out of kind of traumatic cycles and, uh, and just kind of get to where they want to go, just kind of leave all that stuff behind and optimize their life. Um, so a lot of things that we talk about with block therapy or with this fascia is that it's about flow. It's about getting your body back to a good optimized, you know, for you, um, state. Um, we talk about pain and what pain is the, um, things that we're doing with the block are things called melting and shearing. Um, and I just kind of consider it decluttering. That's not a block therapy term, but it's just kind of how I describe it. Da, 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 you guys can see the syllable. We'll get to all of it. Um, yeah, and then the breath. Diaphragmatic breath is super important. Um, so we'll get there. All right. 
So as far as the facts go, uh, fascia is the most abundant tissue in the body. It surrounds and innervates every muscle, every nerve, every blood vessel. It surrounds every cell. It's, um, so it's everywhere. It, it, it affects everything. It used to be the thing in medicine, cadavers, they would just peel it all away, get rid of it as fast as they can, because what is it? It's just in the way, you know, they want to get to the goods. Um, until about the 90s, this whole thing started coming up with the fascia, and they started looking at it differently, and it's now, they had the first fascia conference, I think it was in the 90s at Harvard, and so it's kind of just changed the whole way, at least holistically, you know, medicine is still being taught the same way. I listen to a lot of different uh, different podcasts, uh, you know, on fascia, yoga mind, um, the Polestar Pilates. I'm just throwing out some things that I've listened to recently. So there's a lot of like leading edge scientists and people that are really like staying on top of all of this and sharing. And they're like, in some medical school, they're 15 or 20 years behind. You know, they're just not teaching it. So. Um, and it's basically made of collagen elastin. Let's see. I think I'm going to get to all of this in separate slides. Yeah, protection, <coughs> hydration, the connector and separator. This is cool. I don't really go into that too much. But basically, it's connecting everything. Like, it, it grows out of muscle to then create a tendon, right? It's all the same fabric. Uh, it'll, it'll grow out of bone to connect to another bone but it's all the bone. It's just a different sort of density and composition of the same materials. Um, of course, they'll be in the ground substance, what they call the extracellular matrix, say around bone, there'll be more <coughs> minerals, you know, around blood, it'll be more plasma, you know, so different tissues will kind of have different um, needs. Um, but, so it keeps everything separate, but it it keeps everything together. So if it wasn't separating our bones, we would be bone on bone, right? People, a lot of people know about getting bone on bone with knees or hips, right, like this. Um, so that, you know, that's the fascia keeping all of that properly separated and all together. Um, and we think about muscles as, as being the contractile thing, but fascia has its own contractile cells too, and that, that's important. I'll probably touch on that later. So, okay, I've already covered that. It wraps everything. If you removed everything, the bones, the blood, the, the organs, everything like that, you would still have your unique shape and size because it's the fascia that's making us. Um, yeah, four tissues, muscles, nerves, epithelial, and connective tissue, and it's basically made of collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid. So in the beauty world, what we're always talking about collagen, inducing collagen, we're drinking collagen, you know, <laughs> to keep from aging, you know. Um, and so collagen is amazing. So the collagen and the elastin, they're proteins and supposedly, um, and I'll just go flip here. No, maybe I'll stay back here. I'm going to get to it, I know. Anyways, collagen and elastin, they form a fabric, and they need to really be in balance. So collagen is like a net, and I mean, the elastin is the net. It's really springy. It's elastic. It keeps us flexible, and the collagen is structure. It's hard. It's supposedly the biggest molecule we know. Um, and so it's important to keep those things in balance, and then there's the ground substance that it's all in as well. I think the anatomy isn't really that impressive, but um, the nice thing about the, uh, let's see, it's water and the extracellular matrix, so that's all in, that's whole housing at all too. So that I think the collagen, the elastin, and the ground substance are all in what's called the extracellular matrix. Um, and this is basically where all the nutrients and the high, the water and everything that the cells need live in this ECM. And so it pulls. So we need to be like, that's why we want to have good nutrition. So we've got all this in our, um, the, the matrix so that our cells can pull from it when we need it. Super important. Um, so it's where 
uh, cells get their food and it's where they excrete. And so then we excrete through um, the fascia as well. So I think I'm one of the longest molecules ever found. They're stronger <coughs> than steel, uh, hold 10,000 times their weight. They have a 2,000 pound per square inch sort of um, res resistance. It's, it's, it, it, it like has a force, it can resist force. If it's in a healthy state, it can withstand 2,000 pounds per square inch. Well, that's why, you know, we can really like deal with so much, fall off a ladder and bounce back, you know? Um, but what it also does is when it starts separating from the elastin, which happens as we go through life, and I'll explain a little bit more of that later, it starts to uh, migrate and it starts to grip to bone. And that's where, and then when it starts doing this, it brings in other collagen. It's like, it's almost magnetic and it's just like pulling more and more collagen in. And this is where we get what's called adhesions or we get pain or when we get scar tissue. If you've ever had a scar, it's nice and thin. You can hardly see it when it first starts. And after time, it gets really thick and ropey and big. And that's because all this collagen has just migrated there. Um, so yeah, it's the thing that keeps us upright, repairs injuries, scar tissue, and new structures for adaptation. The elastin, yeah, super stretchy. It can lose its stretch, um, but it's like a lace netting. It just kind of stays in place, and they need to stay in balance. Okay, so the ground substance is super cool because it's like the ocean that we live in. Um, and so it's ba basically made of the collagen, the elastin, and the hyaluron. It's mostly made of hyaluronic acid. So there, here we go, another beauty term, right? We put all this hyaluronic acid and stuff, and we're taking hyaluronic pills, right? And we wonder, is this really doing anything? Um, but that's where all this, this comes from. Um, but it's super important for hydration. And the thing about, um, did I put it here? Do, 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 do. Yeah, the cool thing about it, when it's, when it's warm, it's liquid and has glide. And when it gets cold, it gets gel-like or even hard. So this will be real, real important when we get to why, why we're blocking and what we're doing. Um, so everything needs hydration. Everything needs to be gliding. Um, fascia is really, it, it, the, that collagen and elastin is really, it's together, but the layers of fascia should be gliding, right? And that keeps us mobile. That keeps the ex, and intra and extracellular um, communication really like on. And um, when we start to get into uh, injury or scar tissue or even like habits, we, uh, you know, we start to walk weird or, you know, whatever our, our Posture changes, we are looking down, you know, I, we'll go over, I'll go over posture things that really kind of change how the balance is maintained. Um, we lose the glide, it gets really sticky and gluey. And again, it's like that whole magnetic thing. If it starts to get sticky, it's just gonna keep getting stickier because once you have like, say like a river and you get the first log is stuck, it's just gonna keep catching more and more debris and nothing moves. Um, and I think the two coolest, um, the two coolest facts that I like about the fascia with as far as like the collagen and the hyaluronic acid of the ground substance and the glide is that we actually produce it and we can stimulate more of its production. So what that says to me and they don't really talk about it in block therapy, but as I'm kind of doing my own research, this is kind of a couple of facts that I think is pretty amazing, is that um, we're trying to be hydrated, and yet how do you get hydrated? We can drink water all day long, and we just don't really ever feel hydrated, right? Well, it's not really getting absorbed, but what we can do is we can stimulate our ground substance where all of this um, hyaluronic acid that we can produce it, we can produce it. And the way that it's produced, and these are by studies um, from the really big fascia researchers, um, 
is that we get there by compression and shearing. Well, that just comes, it just ha so happens that that's what we're doing in block therapy. We're compressing and we're shearing. So we're actually doing this action that creates hydration. It creates that internal ocean. Um, and then the other thing that's being, um, so that's the fibroblast. We're also creating collagen. So why are we drinking all this collagen? I've never heard a doctor once say that that's doing anybody any good. Mm -hmm. And if we're drinking all this collagen, well, that's kind of get making us collagen heavy if it's doing anything. It's sticky, it's gluey, right? It needs to be in balance. Well, how come we're not drinking elastin, you know? I mean, or, so you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of, there's some logical, hmm. So anyways, this is the thing um, I just talked about. These people are pretty high up researchers um, and they found these high alert, they're called fascicides. That creates the, uh, the higher, higher Luron in production. Um, so fascia, we, okay, so proprioception, these are sort of like the, the sensory and communication things that go on via the fascia. Um, so proprioception is really cool. Proprioception is kind of how we know where we are in space, right? So um, it keeps us upright. So we're in this sort of gel-like matrix, right? And we have one part of our brain is, is kind of helps with this, but it's like having a little gyroscope that kind of knows where we are. Say we're on the ocean, it just kind of keeps us level, right? Um, so proprioception is one of the biggest things that it does. Interoception is more of like how do we understand our internal landscape? How do we feel? I mean, even like how do I feel about how I like myself or how I look or how I think about the world or anything is in this interoceptive um, th place where we actually like one person can be traumatized when another person isn't, but it gets stored in the fascia. Um, then just the ex these are uh, the exteroception is just kind of the eyes, you know, senses of smell, hearing and those, and then the nervous system and then chemical signals and receptors. So all of that is going on, some of it's conscious and some of it's unconscious, and a lot of it can be made conscious just by awareness. And then this is, again, this is about the proprioception. That's what allows this, this girl here to do what she's doing, you know, and <laughs> athletes um, and kids. Um, and also, how are we gonna land, you know? That proprioceptive sense is going to determine how you land from a fall. And the more our fascia gets bound up and caught up and the flow isn't there and the communication isn't happening and it just doesn't have that like response time because it's jammed up wherever and probably in many, many places, um, we just don't have that response time. We can't, we, we often don't even know where we are, you know, and I, I, I just know like, you know, people in my own family the dizziness sets in, you know, the ringing of the ears, you know, falling or not being able to get up, falling, like before you've even like gotten mm -hmm. off your knees, you know, um, that's proprioception. So that's another reason why we want to like learn to work with the fascia and especially in the feet. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll be talking about that, the feet. So we've already covered a lot of these. Um, yeah, response to the emotion. So that's the interoception, right? So depending on how we're feeling, this could be what sets up autoimmune disorders, uh, soft tissue things. Um, and in German New Medicine, I will just say, and this is not a talk about German New Medicine, um, any kind of like things where we are not feeling good about ourselves, we're having self-devaluation things, it does show up in the, like the skin cells, which can be internal or external. It's really interesting. Um, but, and then um, maybe even like these hypermobility things. I know people with hypermobility, which is another interesting thing because when you're, and, and 
well, I'll talk about this. I'm sure there's another slide up, um, on it. But when you're hypermobile, you're going to these extreme ranges, right? You know, like these kids in circus or athletes or whatever, right? Sports people are always getting injured because you're taking things to a far, really far range, right? Further than you're conditioned to do. Even if you're conditioning yourself, you can still blow over the edge. Um, I have a friend who I just saw after 30 years, and the last time I saw her, we were performing down in the Bay Area. She was a uh, contortionist yogini, right? I was playing the hammer dulcimer and uh, the percussion alongside her, you know, we were doing these little fairs and stuff. And she was and just a brilliant artist. She is totally crippled right now, yeah. It's, she's walking with a cane, she's in so much pain. Um, and it's because of all of this like going beyond your edges and this hypermobility. So when you do this hypermobility stuff, you're separating your collagen and your elastin so you're really loose somewhere and you're really stiff somewhere else. And there's a lot of pain involved. And then many times people are afraid to go into the pain and that's exactly what we have to do. Um, so the fascia is all the protection because, you know, they are with the nervous system, the chemical receptors, just, you know, keeping us safe from whatever perceived dangers, whether they're real, mechanical, or felt. Um, so, and because of this 2,000 pound per square inch grip that it has, um, it's resistant to change. And that's why we can do a lot of stuff to, like, um, we can do a lot of stuff to, to change our pain and to change stuff, but it doesn't really stick. So, you know, I used to be a massage therapist, you know, it's, it's hard work and you're really like just trying to help people so bad. You know, I have friends who are rolfers. That is really intense work to do on a person and to receive, but that's what they're doing. Like this first, um, fascia conference, I think Ida Rolf was one of the founders of it or getting it going, you know, so she was on the right track. Um, but to really go through the entire motion of getting this whole process to complete um, takes a little bit more. I mean, you know, it's almost like you got to be on it every day. So there's a thing called melting. Some people have heard of the melt method. They use different sort of uh, tools to do that. And that's basically, in, what, in myofascial release work, that's what they're doing. They're doing this sort of tug and pull, right? And you have to do it for a certain amount of time. Um, uh, usually like at least 90 seconds starts to like start to get in there and at least three minutes is, is the time that it takes to really start melting through tissue. Um, but you're only going to go so far to get even deeper. And so what we're doing with the block therapy is we're starting the melt. We're creating heat. We're creating heat with the breath and we're creating pressure from the outside, right? So we're coming at it from two sides and we're getting in there. We're getting the melt going. And then when we've got some experience on the block with melting, then we start learning how to shear. And we're, everything we're doing is really to stay safe on the block because, I mean, you can actually get hurt on a little piece of wood on the floor, like laying on the floor. I mean, people get hurt laying on the floor and then they can't get up. And then they've got broken femurs. I mean, crazy things happen. Um, but once you get into the shearing level, the fascia will start to, it'll come apart, right? And then this glide will start to happen again because nutrients are getting in, the water rushes in. Uh, it's like it's like you've taken the river and you've busted through the dam, right? You've started the flow. And it takes a while for all that debris to work out. But it does. All right. So. <laughs> I feel like that some days. <laughs> um, so, let's... So kind of in the everyday life, and this is a lot what Deanna teaches, and she's just really brilliant uh, with it, but basically because we have forces of gravity upon us all the time, uh, we have our own body weight, we have all this stuff that we're doing, we're walking, right? We're getting out in the day, we're, we're moving, 
uh, we're getting into habitual things. We, I, you know, I go to the counter, I turn on my, my tea maker, you know, I stand there for a while, I do all my pouring with one, the same hand every day for decades, you know. Um, we usually start walking off of the same foot. We carry things with the same arm. We're looking down, we're driving. All these actions really start to change the, our shape, right? So of course, the devices and looking down is really like taking us from being upright to starting to bring this heavy weight here. But quite naturally, as we age, um, our, our bodies move in spirals, just like everything in nature is, is we move in spirals. So we really start to collapse. And this is what's happening um, and where we start approaching with block therapy is this collapse that starts happening right here. So what that does is it's cutting the diaphragm off, and most of us didn't even know we had one, <laughs> much less what it's for. So we're all breathing out of the upper chest. Okay, these muscles are getting tired not only from just breathing up here, but also from this weight of our heads, right? Um, our, as we're starting to collapse, the organs get compressed, they get colder because they're just not getting the blood flow and the oxygen that they need. The ribs are kind of coming in, the shoulders are falling in, the back is hurting, right? We want to get all this work done on the back, but we haven't stopped collapsing. Um, also, we're usually one side dominant, right-handed or left-handed. So as we're leading with, say, our dominant hand, we're having to anchor, because this is the collagen at work and the, all the proprioception keeping us upright. So we end up being sort of more loose on one side and more tight on another side. So we have what's called a driver and an anchor side. Um, and then, you know, just even getting down to our feet, we also start to maybe walk, walk with our feet kind of out, right? Or maybe we're coming in and we're collapsing at the knees, right? Or we're going out and we're kind of leading through the uh, walking with the, the quads instead of the glutes. It means all these like minute little details that we never even think about, but we just get used to moving like that. A lot of men, because they're, you know, they're the workers, are always lifting and, you know, doing all of this kind of work. They're really prone to this sort of out supinated position, causing lots of back pain. Any guys not have back pain? <laughs> but um, so j just kind of things like that, it just kind of starts taking us and it'll start in our feet. It'll, our, our feet position will start to take, all, take us out in different ways. Our pelvises will get out of a line, um, so we'll then compensate here. You know, the head may compensate. I mean, it's just like, if you've ever seen one of those Feldenkrais dolls, and I should get one, because if you've ever tried to get one of those and position it so that it's really standing up, it's tricky. Really tricky. You start to move one thing, and the whole thing falls over, and you have to, you know, bring out another uh, thing to make it all, you know, stand up. It's interesting. But we're like that, too. Um, so yeah, so when our fascia is healthy, it's fluid responsive and we have that glide going on, super important. It's the hyaluronins in the, um, in the extracellular matrix, the ground substance. And then as we start, as we're going through life, the collagen is doing all these machinations to keep us upright, keep us stable. Um, and it's all to keep us safe and to keep us alive. Let's see. Ugh. Sorry about that. that's the grossest picture, but I had to do it. This woman hadn't washed her hair for two years, and they cut the hair out, and I'm like, that's probably what our fascia looks like when it gets really, really congested. But this is a picture of, of fascia that has gotten really uh, chaotic and congested. So that's the other term that we talk about with fascia is the chaos that happens in the tissues instead of being organized and having that like smooth... Uh, glide and that flow so um, nutrients oxygen everything our cells need to thrive isn't getting there and then all the debris isn't getting taken away so here we are to block therapy um, so that's Deanna Hansen she started 
this probably about a decade ago. Um, she discovered it. She has her own, you know, story of how she discovered it. But she had been a manual sports therapist for probably 30 years, and um, so she had a lot of hands-on experience with people. Um, she had always struggled with her own weight, um, and just was having all this anxiety. But any, anyhow, some, one day she just kind of went into her own tissues, into her gut with her hands, and she really started working her gut and started noticing, you know, really tracking what was going on there. So got through her, um, her anxiety, her weight started shifting. She really started understanding the body in a different way. She was right there in that beginning phase of the fascia work back in 2000, in the 90s or whenever they uh, started that. Um, and so block therapies just kind of developed out of her. I don't think there's anybody else really doing this. And that's uh, at a conference, and she's, they're Canadian, so they have an annual conference. Um, and that's her nephew, Quinn, and he's her partner in this. And he's a um, bodybuilder, rugby player, so he's you know an athlete and a fitness expert. So he teaches a lot of um, the sort of the exercises that we do to lock in the changes that we're making. And he's also her, uh, <laughs> her torture. Because <laughs> she'll tell him what, you know, she has in the instructions, she's saying, okay, you know, telling what to do, and he's doing it. And sometimes it's because he's so funny because he's like, what did I do to deserve this? Because it can, it can hurt. We're not hurting ourselves. We're just finding our own pains, you know, seeking out our own pains. So I really kind of touched on most of these concepts. Um, but pain is the path. We can be unconscious or conscious about this. Um, and we're basically decluttering, creating space, including maintaining the diaphragmatic breath. I'll get to all these. So, so here's pain. It's the language of the cells in distress. It's protection, fear of it creates trauma also prevents our freedom and no one can get into our own pain better than ourselves and in block therapy we really stress that you're in control and your breath is your guide so we don't do anything that doesn't if we're not breathing in a really relaxed way um, then we shouldn't be doing it right we might be wanting to get into, into some like area that would feel really good to break through, but if we're like <gasps> catching our breath or if we're like gripping other parts of our body just to kind of handle that, it's not the right thing to do. So we really stress that. Um, see, there she is torturing Quinn. They're on their um, perineums. If, any, if anybody wants to do a demo on their perineum, just let me know. <laughs> He said it was like sitting on a, on a hill of fire ants. <laughs> <laughs> I did that class. <laughs> she did that class. Mm -hmm. She can tell us all about it. I've done that class too. Um, so yeah, basically we're just decluttering. So just imagining, this is kind of my analogy, but just imagine you just bought this house or whatever, you move in and you really don't ever put anything away. So you're just bringing stuff in all the time and it just kind of sits there and you kind of make these new pathways to get around it. It's just exactly what we're doing is, you know, the collagen's migrating. We're all trying to figure out how to adapt and stay functional in the world with all of our little things that we got going on. Um, and at some point, it's just too much. We can't get through anymore. And that's usually when we fall into pain or emotional states that we can't handle or whatever. And after we get in there and block it all, not block it out, get in there and block it, <laughs> we end up with clean space and flow can happen. So the diaphragm is the main organ that assists in breathing. Of course, we take it in through our nose and through our lungs, but it's really our diaphragm that drives um, the oxygen and the nutrients through our bodies. Um, it's right here at, over the bottom of the rib cage, so it's right on top of all of these organs here, the liver, the gallbladder, the stomach, the pancreas, is all of this is right under here. We have our solar plexus here, so we have all these nerves coming in here. We have uh, 
the aorta running through, we've got the vagus nerve running through, so everything just kind of runs through uh, and it's all protected by the diaphragm. So the diaphragm can get really cold, it can get really lifeless because we're not using it to breathe. So this is the first thing that we're doing with the block therapies, we're learning to breathe. And we're learning to breathe, get that diaphragm moving. So when we breathe in, it should move down, and when we exhale, it should move up. So it's like a jellyfish. You know, it should just really kind of float like this. And as it's doing, it's also massaging these organs, it's bringing in more heat, and it's the furnace. We use the diaphragmatic breath to really heat our bodies from the outs from the inside. So of course, as we're getting older, we end up with cold hands and feet. A lot of people, or young people, you know, if they're they're not breathing, I know I have one, um, not breathing, and um, it's just the most important thing, if anything. If there's like, nobody takes anything away from block therapy, but just getting into that diaphragmatic breath, you're gonna have changed your life. It's that important. Um, you know, and it also like, as it's going down, it's like helping the, the, um, the organs of digestion warm up and move, you know, keep, just keep things moving. Um, Breathing through the diaphragm increases the oxygen intake by 600%. So just imagine you're getting that much more useful oxygen, right? Um, and 85% of weight loss and detox happens through the breath. So it's like a furnace. You know, as, as we're, as, as we're uh, metabolizing everything, you know, things go into solids and liquids, but they also break, we're carbon-based creatures, so it also breaks down into carbon dioxide. And we don't really think about that part. We just think it all comes in here and goes out there. But it's actually breaking down into gases too. So we're, we're literally like, with this diaphragmatic breath, we're, we're bringing all this beautiful air in. We're opening up space, right, for the air to go, for the blood to flow. And then we're exhaling so that we can excrete the debris that we've just loosed. Um, and it's a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, there you've got someone with a baby block in the car, you know, and this is really nice to keep, you know, and when I'm driving, it's really easy to kind of have my knees fall in, you know, but we really don't want to, we want to get out of that in, internal rotation. Um, when we do this internal rotation, our, our feet will roll in, we could become really uh, pronated, right? We start doing that, now there's gonna be all these compensations in the feet. The uh, toes will wanna to curl, uh, they're gonna to wanna to compensate by creating bunions. I mean, it's just like, it's all from these like internal rotation. Our adductors are weak, you know? Um, part of it, part of it, we're not using our glutes to walk. Um, and we don't realize that we can actually get just really conscious with how we're standing and that's, when I, do, when I do my classes, we always start out with a posture uh, exercise. You know, basically just dropping in consciously to like feeling our toes, where's our weight, our knees bent or straight, and just getting an idea of where we're at, how our body's holding, so that we can consciously start making the changes, and you know how to step, how to walk. When you walk, is your are you walking on your heel? Is the weight moving through your big toe is it moving through your big toes evenly you know just really little things like that that make a huge difference um, so let's see right so it's maintenance right we don't do it for we don't eat healthy for a week and then we're all we're all good um, but yeah people uh, take their blocks uh, in the block therapy community people take their blocks everywhere and I'll show you how easy it is, like in my little bag here. Well, I have my purse. I have my rug that I can pull out anywhere in the park and throw it down. I've got my block. I've got a dowel in there. You know, I'm like, whatever. It's just so convenient. It's not like a yoga block, which is kind of bigger and kind of sticky. And yeah, it's just different. It's very convenient to take. And so people are taking them on vacations because passive blocking is really fun, and we'll, we'll get into that.
So the practices, the first thing we do is we connect with the diaphragm. We really like dial in that breath. We do breathe through the nose. When we're breathing through the mouth, it is a uh, fight or flight breath. So the nasal breathing really feeds the brain. It feeds the vagus nerve. It feeds that rest and digest uh, nervous system. Um, we learn all the different positions while we're doing them on the block. We be in a position for three minutes minimum because that's how long it takes to get that melting effect and to get into a place where we can start shearing and removing those adhesions and that scar tissue, right, and getting that, that glide to come back in. Um, so, right, pain is basically adhesions and scar tissue. Um, what we're really also learning is how to respect our limits. We follow our breath. You know, we're not causing ourselves pain. If you are, then that's not the right thing to do. You'll get to know, like, what's my pain because it's already there, or am I hurting myself, right? Um, yeah, so we're learning the block practice. We're learning exercises, isometrics, how to get uh, positions in the work that we did to stick. And um, yeah, and strength building. If you know, if you want, it doesn't happen every class, you know. But those are kind of specific classes. The time that you do it is up to you. You can do it every day, 15 minutes a day, half hour a day, depends on your goals. You know, a couple times a week. Um, and as we learn the block, we're on the floor. And if that's too much, it is some, for some people to be on the floor blocking. You can block in bed, so it's softer. You can lay on your back um, and have the block on top of you and use your hands, you know, to, to put the pressure in. Um, you can also just use your hands, and this is how Deanna started, just using her hands. Um, and then the passive blocking, like I mentioned, take it on vacation, take it in the car. <laughs> um, let's see. So yeah, just pictures of people blocking See, she's in the belly position. That's how you start. This guy, he's got three blocks going on. So he's blocking his face. He's blocking his side ribs. And he's getting into the space between the uh, pelvis and the lower ribs. So creating space in here, right? So we're, we're lengthening, we're lifting, and lengthening. She's on her IT band. And she looks like she's loving it. He's working his Achilles, the top of his calf, and actually his uh, hamstring. Um, she looks like she's in her armpit. Okay, lots of lymph nodes here. It's just on the way down the arm and on the way up the head. Um, she looks like she's in the piriformis. So she's in that big muscle group in the, in the bottom in the butt. Oh, and this is, I love this one too. She's on the deltoid. Okay. Okay, so we are becoming conscious. So, you know, we do learn, we're, we're starting to learn like how to do things differently, change up the patterns, you know. Um, now when I'm at the, at making my water in the morning, I'm gonna take my block with me and I'm gonna block the bottom of my foot. Here, I'll take my shoe off, I don't like to get. <laughs> You know? What, what I, are you doing? I can't see I've got my block on the, f on, oh. So I just have, have it on the floor. Can you see me right here? And I'm just stepping on it. Right here, right on the fascia, where we get that plantar fasciitis and we get all this Achilles, you know, the, the tendon stuff in our feet. You don't want to do this while hanging on, but I don't have, I'm not, can't hang on to anything right here. Um, and I usually do it on the taller block too. But I go over this in the legs class, and we also do this in the feet class. I do, do a two hour class just on the feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so fun. It's like, a, it's like adult romper room. It's a really fun <laughs> class. Um, so doing things different, you know, now I'm gonna like, I'm gonna use my left hand to operate the tea kettle, right? I'm going to use my left hand to stir. Mm -hmm. Just change it up. Mm -hmm. uh, get out of the routines. Um, so just getting really conscious is really a big part of this practice. Um, 
How, what other ways? Oh, when I'm standing, I'm always, and I do teach this, the first thing we do, go over in most of the classes, we just do this check-in once we've learned it, you know, we're gonna, okay, posture check. Where's our knees? Are we tracking over the second toe, you know? Where's our weight? The knees bent or, or straight? Are we locked, you know? Um, I just had this really interesting thing happen where I'm trying to figure out like, okay, uh, how do I get really on my heels? So that your weight should be on your heel. That calcaneus bone is for your weight. The other 25 bones in the foot, I think there's 26, uh, are all for like springing, you know, jumping, hopping, you know, it's for all those other, and for walking, right? Um, so we really want that tibia to get moved back because when we're forward like this, the tibia is going forward. It's not tracking over the heel so much. That's putting stress on the ankle. The ankles get really stiff and congested too. You don't have the dorsiflexion. As the muscles wrap up the foot, you're, you get really bound up into your calves. Um, so yeah, so just kind of checking. So I just had this experience where I'm just realizing like this, tilt of the pelvis you know a lot of people a lot of us have that anterior so you can hardly do it the anterior tilt right Tilt shortens the back here so we get this kind of achy back you know you go from sitting to standing ow you know um but also just because of the work that i'm doing i'm looking in the mirror all the time it's like how do i get this anterior pilt uh, tilt really out you know change that so quinn had done a video and it was literally like an hour or less that I did this. Okay, I did one, two, three. He taught three positions. I threw in another one. Got on my back. He did this isometric where we had the block in between the knee. We really put our back on the floor and we did a like expanded the breath in a way that I hadn't been taught, you know, in any of the other classes. And when I got up, my back was different. It happened that fast. So my back doesn't hurt, you know, then, you know, uh, but it felt different because now I've really changed something and things are reorganizing. So what I was actually doing was he was teaching how to release the psoas because the diaphragm and the psoas are right there together on the spine, right? And when we get all shortened in here or we get tilted and rotated, it that psoas gets really tight, so how to release the psoas. There's whole psoas classes, but I was super impressed. Now I know, I can just get on the floor, you know, keep that tension with my adductors, you know, like get my core tense and just like expand that breath in a way that I'd never done before. And it's just gonna lock in that change that I'm making in the back, so easy. Um, yeah, so end ranges, I, we talked about the hypermobility, right? You know, when they get into, into these end ranges that the, the collagen really migrates and then there's like laxity and, and with um, sports and everything, you get into a lot of the end ranges. And so we just wanna really be careful with that on the block too. Um, another thing that is very obvious and Kristen works at the gym, so, um, and I was noticed, I noticed that too, is that people are going to the gym to you know, kind of correct their alignment and strengthen their back so that they come like this, right? I was in a weightlifting class and there uh, a couple of the guys had these really such big humps going on that they, they needed a, a pillow when they were like on the bench press, right? Because it's all like this. Um, so they're trying to strengthen their back. No, you need to like free up the ribs you have to like open up and lift, right? This will change, right? And then you can work on the back. Then you can start smoothing that out. Um, so you go into the gym and you've got all these negative alignments going on. So I was like trying to do weights. I'm like, I'm not that weak. But the problem was is my shoulders. There's n the, the communication isn't happening. There's jam, so much jammed up in my shoulders. I'm just not being able to even lift the weights. So, um, what, we, what we're doing by going to the gym sometimes is we're locking in negative alignments. Mm -hmm. So if we go in there and we're already out of shape, and then we go in and pack all this effort on top of it, we're just locking in negative alignments. Um, 
I thought this was a, an interesting thing I just kind of picked up today from Deanna. Um, but another one of the postural things is that we want our uh, anatomical position is palms out. When we're, when we're palms in, the shoulders are, are rolling forward, right? If we, just that simple action of just changing our palm position rolls the shoulder back. So another thing she was saying was that we're all so used to really like doing so much with the digit, the, uh, the thumb and this digit. And it's a very subtle thing, but I, I try to, I'm like, okay, what am I activating here? I'm activating the this bicep, right? So we're so used to the bicep doing everything. Well, as we age, and we're not totally using our body properly, but especially as we age, look at that. We get that. The tricep gets really weak. The tricep is here, right? I can't squeeze those, but if you do, like, just lightly put some pressure one against the other. Can you feel that? I can mm -hmm. feel that. Yeah. Yeah. That is coming from the tricep, mm -hmm. not the bicep. This is coming from the bicep. What a small, insignificant seeming thing, but we really want to strengthen this, right? Um, this is going to help this whole rotation and help heal those shoulder injuries and all that jamming that's happening in here, which is, of course, going to affect all kinds of things, headaches, blah, 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 on and on. Um, so that's another thing we do in the posture thing. And so then if we are working on ourselves or other people, and if you're a body worker, this is Deanna's teaching. You use these fingers, whether we're working on ourselves mm -hmm. So we're helping ourselves in our own posture, in our own strength to maintain and just kind of keep uh, health, you know, healthier body mechanics rather than this thing, right? Getting all the carpal tunnel, da da da. Um, let's see where we are. Bringing order to the chaos. Um, yeah, and when we're blocking, of course, we're bringing attention to spaces that that we may not have felt other than in a painful way. Um, but as things are unwinding, we're going to start feeling things as well that we never felt. Because as one thing lets go, it's, it may start pulling on something else. We may unwind back into a different painful space until we continue unwinding through the whole thing. So I did talk about the anchors and the drivers. The drivers are usually the dominant side, say like the right side, most of us are right-handed, probably because the diaphragm's bigger on that side. That's what I've heard. And I think when we're in the womb, we kind of float up this way. So I haven't really studied that much about that. I just thought it was an interesting fact. Um, so the, uh, yeah, the drivers and the anchors, it will, get, it will put our posture off when, when, we, when we do this, right? Um, and then we create these false walls and false floors. Um, and then we get all these holding up pat uh, patterns. So the feet are super important because every time we step, we are um, cementing in a pattern. We're cementing in all of our patterns every time we take a step. So working the feet is really fun. And I brought some sticks that I guess when we do the demo, you know, we can play with. Um, but this is super simple thing that we do, and we do this in every class, usually if we're just kind of sitting around and hanging out, uh, getting ready to do stuff. We take these dowels, and what we're trying to do is we're creating space back in the metatarsals. Now, I don't know if everybody can see my feet. And we do this by putting the dowel in between our toes and pressing down, okay? And you gotta do it for three minutes, minimum, right? This is really going to start changing your whole foot all the way up the chain. It'll be amazing what starts shifting. If you do this every day, and, you do, and it takes a half an hour, just if you do three minutes between each toe, that's about a half an hour. Um, while you're driving, you can do it on your, <laughs> on your free foot. <laughs> As a passenger, can you? As a passenger, yeah, you can do both feet. The other thing is doing our hands. So our hands and our feet are the drivers for the limbs. Whatever's going on over here, 
is affecting all the way up the chain. So um, if someone if someone grabs your arm, I think I might have put a picture in here. Well, yeah, you know, I might have later. Uh, anyways, so yeah, the, the cause sites of what is happening. So a good example is, um, does anybody want a, a stick to play with their toes while we're sitting here? Here, you pass those back. I got some more here. Yeah, just, just pass them around. Uh, the, the other thing is at home, probably everybody's got a wooden spoon or a pencil. If you're at home, a wooden spoon works, pencils work. My favorite is a paintbrush because my little toe likes that, my big toe likes that. <laughs> yeah. So, did everybody get a stick? There's an extra one. Oh, great. All right, well, let's just pass those extras back up. We don't need them. Awesome, thank you. Do you want one? Nikki? Thank you. You got it. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, hold it for three minutes. So we're doing what? Minimum. So you're you're in between your your toes. <laughs> you're in between your toes, and you're just pushing down towards your ankle. If that's your foot, you're pushing. Yeah. So you just just hold that. And. It might feel really good. It might feel indifferent. It might hurt like heck. You if might it's, have to breathe through it. <laughs> yeah, and so remember, we're breathing through our nose. I should have taught you guys the diaphragmatic breath first, but we can do it right now. So we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. And when you breathe in, you just kind of feel your, your belly expand. And when you breathe out, just draw it all back in. So as you're searching, because that's what we're doing on the block or with the dowel or whatever we're doing, we're finding our position and then we're doing a thing called searching. If, we're, if you're not feeling anything, that's fine. You can hang there if you want. You might get bored with that after a day or two. Um, but then you can just kind of start micro movements around. If you find a, like, a little spot that's like, ooh, that's where you want to focus. Engage that breath and just stay there. Stay there for five breaths, 10 breaths, or the whole three minutes, you know? Um, up and down the toes, there's so much area. Every single like square, everything of our body wants to be touched. It really wants this, you know, this attention. Just see what's there, what is stuck, you know? So by walk, and walking, I kind of get away with it, you know, like when I'm walking, I'll do this. And, I, and I'm pushing my, my webs together as hard as I can. Some fingers, I really never feel anything. Ow. I mean, you're just going to feel it where you feel it. But what you're doing is you're, you're, you're um, sending that energy into there and you're separating those fascial adhesions. Because if it hurts, there's adhesions. That's just all there is to it. And some fingers are going to hurt worse than others, you know, depending on how we use our ourselves. Um, right now, I'm I'm blocking my um, my hamstring. Can you guys see the block under me? <laughs> Passive blocking. It feels so good. Um, all right. So the healing crisis. In any healing work, you're going to run into the healing crisis most likely. If you don't, it's probably not very effective. But so some of these are some of the things that happen. We consider them opportunities. Um, so yeah, as as cells are coming back online, 
uh, they're going to be hungry. And so you maybe feel really tired, uh, like I did when I started blocking. I just slept so much. Um, so we could retrace through old injuries, especially if you have surgeries or scar like broken, broken bones. I have a broken toe, uh, and I teach how to get into this kind of stuff for like getting into the bunions and changing the directions of the toes, how they're collapsing or crossing and doing all this stuff. We can change all that. You can change so much just by what you're doing with your feet right now. Um, but you may have to retrace through an old injury and kind of feel it get worse before it gets better. Um, because you've got all these compensations around it. So, you know, the body has shielded you from that injury. Um, yeah, it could get emotional, have, you know, anger or sadness or grief. Um, that's pain leaves. It may become more intense. Oh, this is the fun one. Rib releases. Everybody's scared of them, but shouldn't be there it's basically when we're when we're opening up our rib cage and we're putting that space back into the ribs and we're putting this this uh height back into our bodies the ribs are kind of sticking together and we're basically unsticking them so you could call it a rib relocation um and they hurt you might not even know that you did it for a day like mine happen and then I wake up with like, oh, ow, okay, I just had a rib release yesterday. Um, some people feel a pop and then they have the rib release, you know, that's their rib release. They can be mild, like, you know, oh, it's just kind of achy to move around and do stuff. They can feel like you got kicked by a horse. I mean, everybody's gonna be different, but it does pass, can take a couple of weeks, can take a month. Everyone's really different. I just had my third one. Now I'm kind of like, hmm, I just had a rib release. Awesome. Um, yeah, so this unwinding, as you're unwinding, things are reshaping. Yeah, uh, the body can want to retract before letting go. It's going into repair mode. And this is a real important point, too. So inflammation is how we heal. That is what's the mechanism that's sending all the blood and the nutrients in. Um, what are we used to doing? Like when we get injured, we're told to uh, rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Compress is probably the only good thing out of that whole formula. Um, basically, when we rest it, uh, it, it's okay. I mean, there's a time to rest for sure. But usually when you have an injury, like in sports and everything, the way they heal through it is they get back on it. And you don't ice, like in block therapy, we don't ice at all. In Chinese medicine, they don't ice. ice. Um, they apply heat. I had broken a bone a couple of years ago, and because I just knew this, I didn't know anything about blocking, I knew Chinese medicine always applied heat. So I was with the uh, tiger balm, right? And the heating pad, because that's keeping things open. It's keeping things flowing. It's energy, right? When we ice, we're like that frozen river. We're jamming it up. We're stopping the flow. And it is so pervasive, you know, and oh, they're always saying, ice it, ice it, ice it. And it's like, you want that flow. You're gonna heal so much faster. Um, yeah, keep mobile if you can, but you know, be smart about it. Just stay, stay in your limits. You don't wanna re-hurt yourself. And you will know this, right? We're becoming conscious with our bodies. We don't need to be, you know, told how to be, we can know how to be, because only we really know what's going on. Um, energy, heat, frequency, yeah, I use red, red lamps, heating pad, um, and I mean, you, people take anti-inflammatories, you know, but whatever, you know, if you can't, if you, if you, they're terrible for you, yeah, so there's many reasons why not to take them, if you can. I'm sure there's herbal things. So anyways, yeah, and that rice method, apparently the guy that even came up with it uh, said it wasn't correct oh. some years, you know, not too long afterward, but that didn't get into the press. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, with the breathing, we're creating heat. We're turning on the furnace. This is like heating the body with the central heating system, not like, you know, putting a space heater in the bathroom or in the garage, you know, to try and heat the house. You know, this is our, this is our space heater. So we're 
learning how to fire up the body, fire up the cells, fire up the blood, fire, you know, it's like prana, it's energy, the breath, and, um, and then we're going to be learning how to create the heat from the outside and just really get in there and just get those adhesions out of there, get that scar tissue taken care of. Um, of course, you can't repair a scar. You, you can't really uncut something. <clears throat> but you can get a lot of flow back to it. I have a big scar here from a gallbladder operation. It had been, <clears throat> it went from here to here, but it got really thick. I was like, God, that thing's thick. Well, it's now just a, a line, like that ropiness is gone. Um, so I just kind of went through the library um, in the membership, and there's just, there's so many programs. There's hundreds of instructional videos. Um, like, <clears throat> well, avoiding surgery isn't a video, but mo most of these are. But if you, you know, people want to avoid knee surgery and hip surgery and things like that, you know, we have a gal uh, in one of our groups that doesn't want to have knee surgery. Well, she's she comes to my classes and she noticed after like, she was doing it with a towel. So <clears throat> most people get the sampler program that I can send you guys for free. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and or get a get a huge change just from doing the the towel, the, the rolled up towel, which I meant to bring one. I'm sorry, I forgot it. Um, but she went from like really not being able to climb the stairs without just really hanging on, and it was just so painful. To now she walks up the stairs. Um, yeah, so it'll shift pain pretty quickly. But if you can't avoid the surgery, it helps you heal a lot quicker after surgery. Um, but, and we'll get to some of these other things. But y'all can see there's just, it really, it fascia's everywhere. So you can. Use it for eye health. Oh, yeah, well, there's probably many ways that we're affecting our eyes. But uh, what, something that I do every morning is, um, this is kind of fun too. I get in and I, I press on my eyes. If you get in there and you start pressing on your eyes, you're going to feel pain. Okay? I'm not going to poke my eyes out, but I'm looking for that pain in my eyes. I'm breathing. I have a little 10-minute timer because I have a hydrogen machine, so um, I'm doing my 10-minute. I'm hi putting hydrogen into my water. And while I'm doing that, I'm really just getting into my eyes. I'm looking for adhesions around my eyeballs, right? And then when I'm done, my thing, my hydrogen water's done, and I, I rinse out with, just I rinse my eyeballs out to help carry that debris. I just released a lot of stuff. So our eyeballs are like ball and sockets, like the shoulders and the hips. So this is kind of a a, a beauty tip. Um, you know, they say this skin is really thin, right? We got to spend a lot on eye creams, and uh, you know. And then as we age, you know, we get like kind of sunken in, right, and gets dark circles. Well, dark circles are really um, stagnancy, right? Um, but what happens is the fascia migrates into this eye socket. And that's what's drawing that tissue in, making it seem thin, right? It can make our eyes, depending on, you know, can make them puffy, can make them really sallow. It just depends on what other things we have going on. But we can decompress that stuff out so eye health there's also in her eye health series um, different uh, sort of eye meditations with the eyes closed you know like looking you know so it's really again like we're, we train posture we're training the eye to have different positions um, that keep it flexible and fluid and healthy um, let's see yeah, we get into the mouth, we can get into the tongue, we're working with the tongue, we're working with the palate. Um, so it just depends on what the goal is, you know? But it's... What's um, pronation correction? What, what does that So mean? if your feet go in, right. or out, or they're splayed, right. or the arch is too high, or you know, whatever, this sort of angle of the feet, that's pronation. Because we want get, to get toward where we're tracking the knee, over the second toe, we're going to need ankle flexibility and dorsiflexion to be able to have that flexibility in there. Um, so we work on that too, which we have to work with the tibia. And then uh, do 
trends and contract your waistline. That's when people get this, uh, they start to get the, th the hand that sticks, right? They can't get, get the finger to come up. So that is, that is coming from the arm, you know, and the neck. So we work the whole, the whole um, chain there. Um, yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Who loves blocking best? <laughs> Me. Kristen. <laughs> no, <laughs> the animals. <laughs> People are always posting oh, their, their pictures in the Facebook group. <laughs> and I have a cat too. And now when I put the pad out and I put the block out, she's right there. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I mean, it really puts us in an altered state when we're on the block. It really just hits, creates that rest and digest, that peace, and the animals love it. Hi, I love them. So cute. Okay, so how are we doing on time? Oh, you're good. You got till 40 minutes. Oh, great. Okay. Um, all right, so this guy, Gary Sharp, he has a site called Outthinking Parkinson's. And um, he's been doing this for a while, and this might be like four or six, maybe six years ago. He took a picture of himself every month. He's so, he's so good at like tracking what he's doing. And he, he has a wonderful he uh, website really helping people get uh, into that shift of the Parkinson's. Um, but see, you can, you can see, and he doesn't shake anymore, but you can see how he was, see how he, he's so contracted, the body is just so contracted, but as he's changing, he's really going through all these different, you know, motions uh, or, you know, uh, postures as he's unwinding. And his website is great if you know anyone with Parkinson's. And th so these are the nervous system things, right? That nociception, that nociception and the fascia wraps all the nerves, right? We can, so it's just good to remember the fascia is everywhere and we can learn to work with it through any system, any organs, any, any ailments or whatever. It's, we can affect it. Whether we clear it all up, I don't know. It's up to us. But I like to think about all of these gut issues that, that people have it's just all one big tube, you know? Maybe if you got a kink in the hose here, it's called something. If you got a kink in the hose here, it's called something else. You know, if you got a kink in the hose, you know, it's like different names for where the kink in the hose is and what happens to be getting caught up there, what bacteria is or stuff like that. I'm not a doctor, I'm not giving medical advice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so scoliosis is another one that it, people have a lot of um, success with in block therapy. Um, yeah, so that kid, uh, and there's interviews with his parents, um, so that's why I put the YouTube there, which on the block therapy YouTube page, uh, you can find all these. You might have to search around. This woman, uh, she became the first, one of the first instructors after this totally changed her scoliosis. Mm -hmm. And she created the Spanish program. Super cool gal. And there's another woman on in the uh, Parkinson's deal. She wrote a book, and she has a very good interview on the block on the YouTube. And her journey is amazing. I can't remember her name right now. And if you, you know, leave me your email, and you want me to look look for those things, I'll send them to you. All right, so this guy's great, Walter Kells. He's in his 70s. This is, he started, okay, here's his story. He had just been blocking for over a year, he, and he was doing all the feet things, right? Using both blocks one at a time. He stands on his block a lot, like in the kitchen, and just, um, he's always finding time to stand on his block. Um, and then using both blocks, put it one at a time, sometimes flat, sometimes on its side. As you move the block on the IT bands, for example, 
I move along the feet a little at a time. Okay, so he's comparing, because the IT band is right, a really long area, right? You can only do something, doing a little bit at a time. Um, so he's working his feet like that. And in class, in my feet class, I also bring in dowels, like closet dowels, because not everybody's going to be wanting to climb on the block or they're not that comfortable. And I found that I can get a lot deeper on a dowel. And then we can just really move in smaller segments. Um, so started with the weight concentrated along the big toe ball and slowly works his way back. He loves the peeling effect on the inside of the heel bone. We do a lot of that, peeling fascia away from the bone because we're trying to get that collagen off from gripping because that's what it does. It grabs that bone at that 2,000 pound per square inch force. Um, that was his hook. I guess that hooked him. Uh, he also does the heel in the corner. Uh, he has a pain, high pain tolerance. Deanna told me that my footwork is responsible for a lot of my gains, and I just like working them. So he had had a lot of gains already. But what happened is then he did this upper body competition. This was back in October, I think. Um, and he came was, out looking like that. Yeah. That was his before. His hair got darker. Yes, his hair changed. There's another, yeah, and you'll see that in the testimonials. Sometimes you'll see that people's hair color, they, the, the gray, the gray lightens. Oh, that's wild. And his nose is different. He looks like a totally different person. Yeah, he looks younger. A lot younger. His face is straighter, it's more smaller. symmetrical. Yeah, more symmetrical. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a old Scottish guy. And he, his dad's like 103, who he takes care of. He does his toes wow. every day. Oh. Once he figured out the toe thing, his, his dad went from not being able to walk to walking. Uh. And he also does this thing where, as his dad is sitting in the chair, he just puts the block behind the back. So that's making a change. Oh. And then the dad's weight's oh. there. And that was making changes, that's too. Like. That could be the son, and that could be his father. That's I know. Not <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, I know, and look how soft it is. Yeah. He, you know, he's all tense here. Yeah. This is all softened up. Yeah, this is a man who looks like he's in pain. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna. I've seen him do some interviews in this and that, and I just don't think he dyed his hair. You know, he's just. No. No, because he's still got some gray on the side. Oh, sorry. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Go home and find that wooden spoon. Okay. All right, so this lady changed her posture quite a bit. It took her two couple of years. Very consistent. Uh, that it, could it be possible that I lost seven pounds just doing the all things cellulite? She's on day eight, but loving it, not dieting or exercising. Wherever she lives, it's too cold. And the legs that she was having a problem with is no longer a problem. And I pulled this off the testimonials page, you know, so I'm not um, going, um, whatever you call that, exposing anybody who doesn't no. know that they're not there. So this is a couple of testimonials um, from my classes. Um, this girl, Kathy, I've only done one class, but I was surprised at how totally relaxed I became and was able to access some areas of my body that had long-term injury and scar tissue. I actually became so relaxed that I fell asleep a couple of times. Um, another woman, chronic niggly pains in my right Achilles tendon and left knee was relieved immediately. And general aches and pains are just disappearing. And she'd heard about block therapy before, and I just happened to be talking about it. And so, um, yeah, now we do it together. And she's hosted a block party, and we'll get to that. Um, all right, Selena owns the Inward Bound Studio, and she takes my classes. The other movement therapist there, who is a myofascial therapist, Emily, she takes my classes. They bring their families, so we're having a lot of fun. 
Uh, Jessica's block therapy classes have allowed me to go deeper into my own physical structure than I'm even able to allow a body worker to do with such little effort. Though through merely relaxing the weight of my own body over the blocks, I've been able to release and open areas of my body that haven't been open in the past. Jessica's gentle guidance has been so helpful in directing me how to get into these areas and in giving me confidence to allow my whole body to take the full pressure that it can. And I've also been amazed at how quickly the fascia responds. Thank you, Selena. I'm thrilled to be engaged with my healing at such a deep level. I've regained trusting that any pain I experience is there for me to literally seek out and melt through. The practice is very engaging, and I would encourage everyone to give a block a try. I absolutely love this practice. I now know that my hips and legs that were in extreme pain have remedy through blocking, and I'm very grateful to have found this lifestyle practice. That's Kristen. It's me. It's true. It's true. It's so true. She can, she can tell her story. Uh, but she's doing the 30-day challenge here, and I, I had, was, had, was blocking at the Y, and she just overheard me showing someone what I was doing, and she just got totally like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Super profound for her. So if you want to get into it, you can take classes with me. You can host a block party. Um, I'll send you the block party. Um, That's if you want to have something either in your own home or in a space that you know of or want to do it or we could do it at Inward Bound. But basically it's getting six or more of your friends and family together and then we'll just come up with the how long we want to do it. And, you know, my classes are two hours. They're $40 a class. Um, or uh, if you buy a package, I have a three uh, class for 105 or 10 for 300 Um so yeah, we, and we just kind of figure it out. Like I think here we were doing three hour classes. So we just had more time to, you know, share back and talk about what was going on. So it was a little bit more intimate, you know, with it we get to in a class. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can send you the sampler program. You can get started at home with a rolled up towel if you want to. Um, I like the block therapy newsletter. It connects uh, with a lot of other things going on, like the MS, you know, people dealing with uh, all kinds of things. Um, so, and if you really get into it, you can get your own block. It comes with a starter program, and every month a new um, three day, three or four day program gets released that uh, you don't have to be in the membership. So everyone will get it who has a block and then you can work through that and then it goes in the membership if you don't want a membership. Um, and then the membership is like, that's when you get into the library and there's just hundreds of videos and programs mm -hmm. that you can go and explore. Um, so in the class, it's a little bit different than just being in the library because um, I do curate the library. If I'm gonna do a theme, I'm gonna curate all of the uh, videos that I can find on that subject plus I'm always like kind of learning more from Deanna and others and so I kind of put it together that's why like the the foot class was like two hours we could have done more um, so yeah I do the block protocols if there's alternatives that I think of like working with the dowel was really effective and so I'll add you know and take away what I think is really going to get people through and then we always talk about posture and alignment you know kind of ground there have a little check in um, sometimes we'll really go into the isometrics of things like I um, did uh, a ribs class recently that I afterwards I took them through that thing I did for the pelvic tilt right because we want to get the tilt here and we want to bring the ribs down right and just employed that amazing new breath that uh, Quinn taught and uh, yeah we can share back if we have time so that's inward bound right now I've been doing classes Tuesdays 3 to 5 6 to 8 and Saturdays 10 to noon and really the thing that that's important is that to do the first three classes is these core classes and that really primes the whole body and it really does take us two hours just to get through the ribs, the organs, um, and the diaphragm. And, you know, to even go down the legs. I mean, we could spend so much more time. Sometimes I feel like I'm rushing through. 
um, and then the shoulders, arms, and head. So you've really like kind of touched the main areas. We've really kind of opened things up. Um, we've learned how to breathe. Um, we learned how to shear a little bit. And, uh, and then from there, uh, the all things classes are just kind of like, then I'm gonna, you know, then we start moving up body, like all things feet, then we'll do all things ankles and the tibia and the knees, and then we'll go into the thighs and the hips and the pelvis and just kind of move up the chain in the classes. So, um, Jessica, if what you suggest is to do the, the three, the core agreement series, and so then going down to the price, that would be like three at 105, you know, mm -hmm. which would kind of cover that. Would they, they would happen, you'd have to pick times, you know, because you offer them on these particular times, so you have to kind of see how yeah, and I need a minimum of people to make a class go. Uh -huh. So basically, if you go to inwardboundwellness.com, yeah. the schedule, then you would just book. And, and you don't pay. I just have people pay when they, you know, mm -hmm. at class. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's helpful for me because I'm just really new at trying to figure out how to do this and get, like, regular classes going. So mm -hmm. when I get a group together that's great you know we'll get through those three core agreements and hopefully people want to continue right yeah. mm -hmm. or maybe they want to get their own block and get a membership and you know especially if you have something big going on that you need to shift if you've got scoliosis if you've got some major uh, issues like the the <coughs> collapsing knees or you know you've, you've just major hip stuff and Kristen will tell you you're going to be doing it every day or almost every day. So this is just kind of an example of the All Things series, like after we get through the core agreements, then you know we move basically through the body. There's a series for chairs who, for people who can't be on the floor. I haven't really gone deep into that one, but I do have friends who um, have pretty serious issues that they can't be on the floor. Um, yeah, the two hour classes are best done in order after the three core agreements, but they don't have to be. You know, if you're just working on your shoulders, you might just want to come and do upper body classes. But it's all connected, and you'll want to get there eventually. So there's the block party. I think we had seven, eight or nine, seven or eight. I think we had, yeah. But it's great. Sheepskins, you can do this anywhere. I mean, yeah, just get comfortable. What size dowel is this? You're asking us to return these dowels, is that what you're mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. size dowel is this? This one? Yes. Uh, I don't know. It's like three inches. I, I basically yeah. had a paint stick, and I thought, this is perfect, and I just went to the store, and I just matched it. I don't really know. And then I cut them and sanded them. Yeah. Um, I like the... Um, Paintbrush idea. I know. Just for the having that grid, grid mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The paintbrush is great. And blocking the head. I use my dowel, my bigger, like my closet dowel, to just like just block my head. If I'm just sitting there watching or just sitting around, it feels so good to just get in there and just. Ah. Let's see what else we got going on here. So yeah, I, I can do one-on-ones if someone's really got some serious, you know, something they really want to get deep into. You know, we can talk about what's going on. Um, I take before and after pictures and uh, create a protocol. Mm -hmm. If we go that route, you'll want to get a block and you'll want to get into the membership because you're going to be needing to follow a protocol that I give you that will be in the membership section. Um, and the thing with the newsletter, which I was like, it's kind of cool, um, because there's Deanna's really connected with this really nice holistic, worldwide holistic group, and there's all these summits that go on. So, you know, might just come across, you might have an issue or an interest or a family, you know, member who might be interested in a topic. So, but she is part of all these, so she's bringing in how fascia relates and helps with all these kinds of things. So there's the Block Therapy YouTube. It's an awesome place to learn. There's instructional stuff covering the basics with the towel, really. Um, 
they have a lot of good discussions with fashion masters who are them, Q and A's, lots of stories of transformations, and like that other gal with the Parkinson's, amazing story. Um, yeah, lots of videos. The Block Theory Therapy communities on Facebook. Anybody can go on Facebook and join. You don't even have to be, you know, a blocker. But there's a search tool right here. And you can search anything, issues, questions, and you'll just, people will just, it'll come up, everyone, you know, how people work through stuff, lots of good suggestions, great stories, you know. That's where Walter Kells, the guy who went from being a young, old guy to a young guy, his story was in there. And then I just crediting block therapy, uh, this girl here, Alicia Celeste, I really like how she teaches very similar to this but she teaches partnering you know I've just found that you don't always have a partner handy and we can always do our own fascia decompression and then I just learned from this myofascial <coughs> release guy um, some other basics okay that's pretty much the end of it thank you and I guess I should just say also there's the block buddy, the block baby, and then this is something new. It's a paddle. It's really for like face work is what it was designed for. And I'm an esthetician, and so I might start bringing this into a, my skincare practice. Um, and I don't think these are available right now, but and they will how, be in the future. How much are they? Just um, they're the shockingly low price. <laughs> they're 147. The, they're all the same oh, all and the same. yeah and I know it sounds horrendous but really it, it's not what but what it does for you it, it's it's not yeah okay we got two yeah. two blockers in the room who will say it's it's a, a yeah. good investment it, it, it's, like, it's, just the two sizes. it's just the two sizes and and they uh, they before COVID they were manufacturing in Taiwan I think so in all, anyways, all that shut down, and so now they have built in Canada, they're Canadian, uh, a new facility. So now they're just getting everything back online. So it's been a huge process to start rebuilding the blocks and from scratch, and they're they're quite handcrafted. I mean, I, I know arborists that I've shown it to, and they're like, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't even try to do that for So, but yeah, you can pass these around. I have a few up here, but we'll pull the... Uh, the mats out and play if you guys want to. All right. Any questions or do you guys want to hear from Wendell or Kristen? Yeah. <laughs> I, I could say that it, I, I've lost some weight now, maybe some, for some other reasons, but um, I, I, apparently people lose weight. And it, as one of the, the slides said here, it's 85% of weight loss mm -hmm. is through the breath. What? I thought you had to do that. That's your Well, so you're breaking this stuff up, and most of that is, is the carbon, and you're breathing it out. I, yeah. What? Okay, I like that. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a little follow up question on that? When I was doing the practice here on my toes, sometimes I would have a lot of pain. Yeah. And then my calm breathing would get, I would get tight because I'm trying to handle the pain. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, so I could do it right now. If I pushed farther this way, I would have so much pain that my shoulders would compress and my breathing would go. Mm -hmm. So you don't go that deep then. You stop mm -hmm. and make sure you're just mildly feeling it and your breathing is most important. Mm -hmm. And then you go back into it. And you really want to just go in okay. slow and take as much as you can. And that breath will carry you through. And as you're applying this pressure, it's going to change. You know, What's hold it for, for five, ten breaths, okay. or the whole three minutes. It's going to change. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's you know, part of the it's very rapidly. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. surprising, I mean, it, unexpected. So, oh, cool. And there's no there's no charge for gravity. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Do it anywhere, anytime. So what's the best way that you time yourself? Because that's always this yeah, fine thing minutes. about the three minutes and, and uh, yeah. how to kind of keep track of that. What, what have you come up with? 
Well, I don't. Cell phone. <laughs> yeah, you can do a cell phone. Uh, on my on my phone uh, for class, I have a t it's called a Tabata timer. So I can practice. I can set it to like three minutes, and then I'll do like a minute so that I can pull everyone out of position, get us in a new position for a minute, and then we go back in for three minutes. And after you do it a while, you kind of get that rhythm of what three minutes feels like. Mm -hmm. And um, three minutes oftentimes is not that long. It's not long enough for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll go in to be like, oh, I'm going to just go block for, one block for half an hour, and then like two and a half hours later, I'm still rolling around on the floor. Uh, I'll just stand up. I mean, Let's, I, Kristen's got a great, got a lot so going on. I, I, this is really hard to stand like this now, but seriously, I used to stand like this. And people would even say, oh, is that Christian Johnson? Because, you know, my feet. Well, I, I can't really stand like that anymore. I mean, it, mm. it, it's really exciting because I, I work at the Y and I'm on my feet all day and I literally have used my cart as a walker mm. because I was so much pain in my, um, my hips. And, I, you know, I went to Amsterdam and, you know, mm. everything, right? And then <laughs> I overheard her. At the Y, and I, my body, I think, was shaking me over there. Not, not my mind. Um, so anyway, and I, I leapt at it. I just uh, w got right into it, and um, because you know, pain was the driver, and um, and I um, am doing this lower body challenge, and I called her, and I was like, I'm not pulling myself up the stairs now, and I'm not holding onto the wall and going. I mean, like. So, you know, it really, but, it, but it's a lifestyle. It, it's not like, like I'll wake up another day and I'm like, oh crap, everything that happened yesterday is kind of, you know, back to whatever. But no, it's not. It, it's just shifting and changing. So mm. I could go on and on. <laughs> How long have you been doing it for? How long have I been doing it? Not very long. A month and I, a half, two yeah. months. Yeah. Oh, and I, oh, and oh, I, yeah. my budget, I made this fit into my budget, let's just tell you. I, I, I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even think twice, you know. Um, it, it's like, it's a tool that, you know, it just, you can take it where, it's so easy, you can take it wherever you want, you know, it goes where. What size would you say to start with, the larger or the small, or does it matter? It well, it kind of, they say it kind of depends on, on your, your like, size, like if oh. you're five feet or if you're tiny, yeah. you might want to start with the baby. With the baby. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah that makes um, sense. You know, and then, I mean, they're both very useful, for sure. I mean, I use the baby for some things, um, and the block for, m the big one for most things. And the thing I didn't really tell you guys, but we can play with this, I'll bring the mats out. Anybody who wants to try, can try a position. But we always start right here in the belly button, mm -hmm. because that's what's connecting us with our breath, number one. And it's also, like the Chinese also say, and I think Ayurvedics too, all disease is right here. It's mm -hmm. the, I think it's mm -hmm. the hara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like I don't know what it's called, but I know yeah. that's um, where everything begins. begins. Yeah. It begins, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And this is a scar, the belly button. Mm -hmm. So again, like all scars over our lifetimes, it's drawing more and more into it. And I think that's part of that pull. So we're opening that up. Mm -hmm. And every day is different. Depends on what you've eaten, you know, this and that, you know. Um, some days it's kind of like, <sighs> and other days it's like, <sighs> you know. <laughs> it's always different. I know in yoga they're using the balls a lot. You know, it's yeah. It, um, is there a rationale between the harder surface of the right. ball? Of the, oh, yeah. Ball? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wood is basically the same density as bone. Okay. So we're going, we're, we're bringing okay. it to the bone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we yeah. take a class, do you provide the blocks or do you have yes. to have a block before? No, okay. no, I have blocks. And you, you mentioned the rolled up towel. So mm -hmm. um, if you had one here, it's pretty simple to do that. And then you either have rubber band around two or I, I use tape around the ones that I have. And you can put a, a you know a, a large dowel, you know, like the coat hanger in the middle of that. And that, that seems to work as well. Yeah, great idea. Give that towel more more structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually bring towel the rolled up towel to the the demos and the you know, but I forgot today. 
And we have pillows, and you know, it's just kind of like you just want to stay comfortable. You know, some some days it's like mm -hmm. grab that pillow and you're going to be supporting yourself as you're in certain positions, because mm -hmm. you're really like it's just getting in there and exploring every inch of your body, mm -hmm. seeking the pain, mm -hmm. seeking the pain. I know it's quite quite a, quite a concept. I know. You know <laughs> go after what, that pain. What you kind know. of medieval people are we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know anything about fascia blasters? You've heard that. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? You know, in the Facebook group, you know, I've read about that. Um, it's really staying on the surface. I personally wouldn't use them. I mean, some people say that it really changes things. Mm -hmm. Deanna says that you're really creating a lot of damage. It may be okay for a while, but the long term is probably damaging. I don't know. I, I don't have any sense. Do you? Do you? Um, I have them. I've actually, when you said about the cost, I have multiple times my kids will get headaches bad enough. I've had to take them to the ER, and I've been able to blast which is their heads. Mm -hmm. So maybe just doing this even and it kept them from going. Good. And one day, one of my girls was like, "No, we're going," and we had to wait. And she's like, "Okay, you can blast me," and I blast her, and she'd be, "Okay, stop." And we did that a few times, and then she'd start getting chatty, which is my clue that she's feeling better. Yeah. And she's like, okay, we can leave. We don't need to stay here. Yeah, and awesome. We left. Yeah, and you know, it's a tool. And that sounds like a great way to use it. So I was just wondering if you knew, like, what the, this bash is definitely in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many fascia tools out there, different ways that people are doing it. And we're just doing it this way. How long have you been doing what? Uh, I, got, I got into it last August. So not it's that just long. Amazing. So a year. year. Just a really year. Obviously found your calling. I love it. I love it. I love it. So did I hear you say that we should not be taking collagen? I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. Well, I've just never heard a doctor ever, I'm, you know, I've heard doctors being that asked, that. and it's just kind of like... Because somebody at the health, you know, who's out there, and I'm like, so one thing I take is collagen. Please. And I started taking it about a month and a half ago, and I do feel like it's helped with my skin and hair or something. Oh, good. Yeah, so... I would just definitely take it with liquid, like yeah, hydrolyzed right. collagen, you know, just... Water, yeah. yeah. I know people put it in their coffee. I even have some, but I never use it. <laughs> I think you said that we, the body produces collagen. Yeah. If you're and, really stimulated, then yeah. it will And, and we're producing collagen and the hyaluronins doing the block therapy. Yeah. And, and with other manual, like myofascial uh, t therapies, it does produce collagen. It's this sort of like pin and stretch thing that stimulates the fascia blasts which is the collagen producer, the fascia sites are the hyaluronic acid producers, which is, will be produced when we get into the shearing. shearing. That's when we create the water, when we get in there and really shear it. I can just imagine it's like squeezing the Earth's crust and it's probably full of water down there and we don't have any water shortages. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's true. I have a fatty tumor on my leg. Is, do, do you have any testimonies about that? Yeah, like a, a, what do they call them, a, a sebaceous cyst or a lipoma. Um, yeah, supposedly you can melt through them. Would that be something that you might find on going to the site? You can, yeah, look on the Facebook and just put in lipoma and see what people are saying. And where is it on your leg? Um, just above my knee. And it's big. Yeah. I have one right on my back, and I just haven't spent any time. Like, if I probably blocked it every day, I would have be a better testimony for it to see how it changed. I, I'm a lymph therapist, so I would think that when this is helping then the lymph flow, and perhaps that might be a lymph cyst, I don't know, might be. And so then that would all work together on what you're saying here, so that makes a lot of logical sense. It does, because we're melting. Right. And fat melts, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're doing on our liver, when we're doing these like um, mm -hmm. belly and rib positions, we're we're on our liver, you know, and we're yeah. assisting, bringing warmth to the liver, helping those fatty livers decongest mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm.